The following is a Stars and Strikes Doubles rebroadcast, featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. The legendary bowling center, Stars and Strikes Doubles, features the best caliber bowlers from around New England and team competition. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced and conducted by the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the Londonderry Bowling Center and Stars and Strikes Doubles here on the Winds of New England. Glad you could join us. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. We begin semifinal weekend. We are down to three teams in our doubles competition. One of these three teams will advance to the Tournament of Champions, and uh, hey, our number five seeded team is still alive here. Still alive, trying to make it three in a row, and it doesn't get any easier as it goes along. And uh, But the Billy Caulfield and Bob Mays have been bowling great the last two weeks. Uh, last week, just enough to win. The week before, of course, a great 400 series. All right, let's meet our two teams. First of all, that uh, two-time defending championship team we've been talking about, a number five-seeded pair from Milford, New Hampshire, Bill Coffold, and his partner from Dover, New Hampshire, Bob Mazur. Okay, and Billy comes in averaging 125, his roll-off score again at 621. Bob Mazur's at 123, and his roll-off score 619. All right, and as Dan mentioned, the two wins uh, last week, they rolled a 357 to beat Joe Ashline and David Blaine. Two weeks ago, it was a 411 to narrowly win against Rick Barassa and Tim Lipke. So now they try for three in a row here in the semifinals, but to do it, they'll have to get by our second-seeded team. First of all, from Plastow, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington, his partner from Bradford, Massachusetts, Mike Sargent. And a seasoned team it is. Uh, Gary Carrington comes in averaging 131, uh, roll-off score 657. Mike Sargent is at 125, and his roll-off score 642. All right, semifinals. The uh, losing team today will take home third-place prize money, sharing $250. The winners, of course, move into the championship match next week and get a crack at our Tournament of Champions seating. Of course, we'll talk more about that as the week goes on. But uh, uh, we've got a terrific match shaping up here, and we're hoping that you're back for it. We've got three strings coming up. Doubles competition here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and we'll start the match right after this timeout. Don't go away. All right, three teams left as we move into the semifinals. The number one, number two, and number five teams are left. Coffold and Mazur have knocked off the number four team, Barassa and Lipke, and last week the number three team, Ashline and Blaine. Today they take a crack at the number two seeded team, Carrington and Mike Sargent. And uh, the winners of this match today move into the finals against Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney. Bill Coffold for the third week in a row to lead off for the team of Coffold and Mazer. And look at this, almost. Last week he started the match with a strike. Today he'll settle for the spare. Well, it'll be interesting to see how these guys uh, put this together this week, Dan, after the two previous weeks that they've had with the great score. And then last week struggling a little bit, but still winning. They got the big finish last week when they needed it. Finished uh, Billy Coffel, actually finished with, well, Bob Mazer put a spear up in the eighth, and Billy Coffel filled it with nine, followed by another spear with nine, and then a third spear. We won't mention the fill there. <laughs> it's just the win, opposite. Though. He knocked down nine, and he left <laughs> nine standing. <laughs> well, Bill missed an opportunity there. He'll settle for the 10. And I gave him an eight. We'll just correct that. He'll probably want th those two pins. I'm sure he will. Against this team. They'll want all the pins they can get. Gary Carrington leading off with the team of Carrington and Sargent. You're going to be hearing the name Sargent a lot in the next couple of weeks, regardless of who wins this match. Well, Gary Carrington has a chance to start off with a spare with just the six and ten pins standing. No. Ooh, takes out just the six. The 
10 bucks. There uh, exists the possibility if Carrington and Mike Sargent were able to win this match that we would have a father against son matchup next week. With Mike's son Chris, part of the uh, number one seated team. Of course, we have two gentlemen here that don't want to see that happen. That's correct. <laughs> Well, the way I look at it is, ooh, almost for Gary. The way I look at it is we'll have a great story next week either way. We'll That's either true. have a team going for four wins in a row or we'll have a father and son story to talk about. Hey, it's not Tanya and Nancy, but what the heck. I was, <laughs> right. I was thinking the same thing. We, we, says, do, what nah, we, <laughs> we do what we can. We do what we can. Seven and eight pins for Bob Mazur. All kinds of pins out in front and to the right and left and, and down. It's two marks out of three boxes now for the team of Coffold Mazur. Oh, that ball is right in there. And this time just the eight pin is left. Gives him 47 through three. Chance to make it three marks out of four boxes. Oh, he hit it, and it, will it go down? No. <laughs> they say all you have to do is hit him. <laughs> he actually, if the wood wasn't next to that eight pin, he would have knocked it over, but the wood helped it stand up. 57. And here's a look at Mike Sargent. Gary Carrington's partner. Oh yes, there's a veteran break. <laughs> a rocking seven pin, falls into the four. And he's got the 610 with a plank in front. For the spare. Matching the spare put up by Bob Mazur. First mark for the team. Mike Sargent's uh, last time with us here on the Winds of New England as he throws the strike on the Started to say that Mike's last appearance was uh, here on doubles back in January of 93 as we get another look at that strike. Mike was the number two seed then. He was paired with Steve Vadney. They won the semifinal and then lost in the finals. Off the head pin for Billy Coffold, but not a bad break. Just the one and the three pins left and a piece of wood in back of it, and another piece to the right. Oh boy. No. You heard it. Oh, Bill, and that was him speaking. <laughs> well, just gotta regroup, forget about it. Come right back to the next box. 67 at the halfway point. Uh, what usually happens now in missing easy one is you get eight or nine. It makes you feel real good. There you go. <laughs> well, he's got the five seven. And looks like he may carry him the ball off the piece of wood out front. Have the ball take the five, the wood take the other. Seven pin, he could be too high though. Mm. So two chances. Obviously could have had the first one. That one was a little more difficult, but it was there. Two ten boxes. And now Gary Carrington working on a double mark as he steps up to fill this strike left by Mike Sargent. How many games do you suppose Mike Sargent and Gary Carrington have bowled in their careers together in, oh. in this kind of competition, either on television or in tournaments? A few hundred. <laughs> this year. <laughs> oh, boy. It's Thousands and thousands, I'm sure. Spare on strike for Gary. Three in a row. By the way, speaking of tournaments, I know you're much too modest to bring it up yourself. I nearly okay. neglected it myself, but congratulations. Well, thank on, uh, you very on much. On winning the recent uh, WCBC tour event. That was uh, what weekend? That was back in February, right? Back in February at Portsmouth. Yes, Portsmouth Bolorama. And that score was? 7.05. Well, now, 
we, we haven't really had a great deal of time to talk about it here, but we have brought it up once or twice that the WCBC, the Pro Tour, has made a significant change this season in the format going from 10-game tournaments to five-game tournaments, and it seems like it's a big, a big controversial issue right now. Where do you weigh in on this? Well, I... I now that you've won one. <laughs> yeah, it maybe it dropped to, to five just in time. <laughs> Those older fellows get a little tired. Um, I don't know. It, it, it was, a, like you said, a significant change. And if you're going to make a change of that magnitude, you have to live with it for a couple of years, I feel, you, you, to find out what the true impact is. Right. And, of course, there's already a question whether or not they're going to remain with that format or not. But uh, it certainly does level the playing field. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that it'll increase membership. And then your borderline uh, bowlers, as far as average qualification, which is 112 for men, 102 for women, uh, have a real shot at cashing now. With the 10 games, I think your better bowlers are going to come out in the end. Anyways, thank you again, and uh, I'd like to congratulate Louise Hamilton, who won mm -hmm. the women. Okay. So. Bob Mazur, 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine, piece of wood there. For the spare. <laughs> oh, as we tape, it's, of course it's vacation week, taping sessions and we have a lot of little youngsters enjoying the game, and one almost came over and joined lane 29. <laughs> He's supposed to be on lane 24. <laughs> oh, Mike Sargent. He saw Mike's reaction. He thought he had a shot at that 410. He was on the left-hand side, which is the correct side, because the wood in between. Now he just tries to grab the four. And it's a 9, 96 now, and the lead is at 11. However, there's a spare already up. And here he comes again. <laughs> Oh, there it is for Michael. Strike in the eighth. Matches the mark put up in the eighth by Bob Mazur. And Mike Sargent, the father now, the older of the two sergeants, <laughs> has thrown two spares and, oh, a spare and two strikes so far in the match. Oh, Billy Coffold comes back, strike on spare. Hey, look, I can do that too. <laughs> Not a strike this time. This time, the 5 6 10 with no wood. Billy was trying to negotiate that piece of wood to stay on the plate, on the playing surface. Thought he had a better shot, which I agree with. A 5 6 and 10. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Great effort. Not only did he nearly bring the 6 pin out to get the 5, he almost hit the piece of wood in the channel that could have jumped out, but neither happened. So it'll be a 10 and a 134 opening game, and here's what happened. Oh. He actually hit the piece of wood in the channel, but it stayed there. Now Gary Carrington will be working on the strike put up by Mike Sargent. Right through the center, oh. but what a break. Is that another one of those veteran breaks yes, you were talking Yes, sir. About? Yes, sir. <laughs> These guys know how to make their own breaks. That shot. Two, four, seven left. Very full on the head pin. Could have been a spread eagle. Instead, well, not a spare. Sometimes uh, you get a break, and other times they take it right back. It's a nine fill on the strike, though. Gives them 115. They get 125. Right, go 11, babe. Go 11. So they're in lead by a pin, and they're opposite an open frame, as you can see. So they can increase that lead with a mark. Gary doing a little house cleaning on lane 30 before he moves over. Gary from Plastow, New Hampshire. He and his wife Kathy have two sons, Matt and Michael. Gary's a machine operator for AT&T in North Andover, and there is a big bomb of a strike in the 10th. So he chips in a strike of his own. That's, as you see the replay of that strike, the fifth mark for the team, the third strike in the string. The other side of the ledger, four marks for Billy Coffold and Bob Mazur, three spares and one strike. 
Both teams have only left two pins standing the entire game. I think Gary might have felt he had a double strike on that ball. A little extra body English there. He knew the ball was in the pocket. Ooh, and instead it'll just be an eight fill. But it doesn't cost him that much in the tenth. It's still a fine 143 for the team. Good games to open this match for both teams. A nine pin lead for Carrington and Sargent, and we're back with more on Stars and Strikes doubles in a minute. Ed Jerome and Brian Fuller sit atop the qualifying teams for the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions with that 430. John Maffeo, Dave Arsenault, right behind them. Bob Kelly and Larry Valcourt. Stan Mayo and Scott Richardson. Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon, the five teams that have already qualified. And uh, one of our remaining three teams in this series will join those five teams in the Tournament of Champions. That'll be determined next week. Still a lot to be determined this week. Good match going here. Mike Sargent leading it off for the team of Sargent and Carrington. They have a nine pin lead. And that's a spare. Mike actually hit that one on the left hand side of the head pin. Watch the head pin, he throws the head pin into the cluster and clears them all out. Another mark for Mike Sargent. I would like to make a prediction. I don't often do that on this show, but I'd like to make a prediction that we will see at least one double strike before this show is over. Okay. Oh, Mike misfired on that one. Twenty-nine. Bob Mazer now. Nine drop for Bob. Almost a strike. Just a three pin. And there's the spare. To match that one put up by Gary. Oh, oh, big boy. strike. Just strike on spare. Not much doubt about that when it left his hand. Sitting almost right behind him. And just see that ball going hey. right in the 1-3 pocket. Gary Carrington. Gary thought he had a half Worcester. He got a bonus. Stole the one. <laughs> Among the uh, pro bowlers that we see on a regular basis, Dan, Gary probably has the shortest approach of any of them. Yeah, he takes he really three does. very small steps. Almost like a rocking step, too, before he takes those three. But you're right. That's much, even much smaller than a normal walking step. He's no more than... Maybe three and a half, four feet from the foul line when he starts his approach. And you contrast that with some of the big fireballers who stand all the way back, try and get as much room as they possibly can. If Joe Ashline threw as hard as he does by taking that short of approach, his arm would come out of the socket. <laughs> He wouldn't be able to throw it that hard. Just build up enough momentum or speed with the approach. Billy Caulfield now working on a strike. Chance to take the lead. 1-3-7, and seven, no playable wood. Yes. Doesn't need any playable wood. Three in a row now and the lead by four. 
It's just splits the one and the three. Watch the head pin right into the seven. Right back in there again. Ooh, that piece of wood was coming over too. <laughs> Uh, gotta be careful here. He wants to avoid the one that's half in the channel and try to catch the other two. Oh no! Ooh, oh, you saw Bill. It that way. No, I don't think so. No. He just put his <laughs> hand over his chest like, oh no, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, not a bad start for the team of Caulfield and Mazur here in game two. Four marks in a row, and they have taken the lead, as you can see. And we'll be back with more on Stars and Strikes doubles in a minute. Mike Sargent. They're up by nine after one, but now they're down by 13, plus a bonus ball coming when Bob Mazur gets back up there. Three, four, seven. Trying to snap everything over to the right. It doesn't quite happen. And it's a 10. And another two and one split. This time the four, seven, and 10. Go right at the seven pin, as close to the channel as you can. Not it's right in the middle. Turned around as soon as he threw it. He knew he was right in the center of the pin. He had to be to the left. He works it out for two 10 boxes, but no marks. Bob Mazur looking for the fifth mark in a row for the team at the beginning of this second game. Oh my. Well, that's what Bill Koffel did on the other side with the two pin in the uh, tenth box last week. Last box of the match. I think Bill just said thank you very much for bringing it up again. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a team. See, they, That's right. they feel for each other. They're trying to complement each other, so now they've each done it once. And Bob has to take a six there. So all of a sudden, the lead is down to ten. Right. I mean, they had a spare and a six box, and they lost ground. Instead of them being up over 20 pins, the lead, as they said, dropped to 10. Bob right back with a big first ball, leaving the five. And the spare. Five out of six frames marks the second game by Bill Caulfield and Bob Mazur. Gary Carrington now for the seventh and eighth frames. Opened with a mark in the first box, but they've been shut out since. Ah, get out of there, Rick Pitt. Wow. How does that happen? The eight and the ten. If there's any good news, it's just there's wood on the plate, but it all depends on how it lines up. Rolling back toward the eight pin is probably not very good. That's Either end, I'd probably prefer the, uh, the right hand end. It would snap towards the 10. It's going to go left, right oh. behind it. <laughs> Gave it a chance. And the nine. So this is now a six box drought for the team of Carrington and Sargent. shoot at the five pin. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be the five, six, and ten for a minute. Gary threw two strike balls there and ended up with a nine and a spare out of it. But they'll gladly take the mark after the long spell without one. Bill Koffold. This is to fill a spare. 
Misses the head pin, but takes eight. And leaves the one in the three. Did this before, earlier in the match, first game. And then he went by the one and the three to the left. But not this time. Oh, mm. boy, he did punch out the head pin, though. Ten box, so the lead in this game is 28, but in the match, 19, as you see, for Koffold and Mazur. Pocket again, and again a two pin lead. The five and the eight. Nope. Well, we might be thinking about those two later. And what that does is give them a chance to fill this mark and get another one, get right back in the match again. They're working on a spare, as you can see in the eighth. Mike Sargent will fill that, tra trailing by 19. Oh, Mike looked a little over anxious on that one. He really pulled it. Oh, that's the that. one he oh. wanted. Oof. And a nine. And it's 97. Opportunity gone by the board there. Another big first ball. Leaves the 10 pin. Oh yeah, right there for the spare. Seven plus one. Uh -oh. And a big strike on spare, 117. And a two game total, 260 for Carrington and Sargent. We take another look. It didn't take long. Bob Mazur, right through the heart. Good effort there, played the three and the six, come off the wall. Well, Bob Mazur will move over to lane 29 and the situation is this, they will have the lead in the match. If he marks, it could be double figures. If not, it'll be single figures. Not the ball he wanted. Single figures it is. A nine box, 131. A two game total, 265. And just five pins the difference. Koffold and Mazur take the lead in game two, but only by five with the third and deciding game to come. And we'll be back with it after these words. Game three, this will decide it. Good match working here and Bill Koffold leads it off. One, three, and seven. Made this shot earlier without any wood. This time he's got a piece of wood right next to the seven pin. Oh yes, fine shot. And the ball breaks from right to left. And he just caught it going to the left. Watch the ball continue on down into the wood next to the seven pin. Second time he's made that shot. Right back in the pocket. This time seven and 10 pins left. Oh. 
wants that, at least that piece of wood to stick around. No. <laughs> well, it's just more of a challenge now. <laughs> Don't forget, tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England, our semifinal singles show in this series. Our number three seed, Jack Quinn, going for his second win in a row. He will face our number two seed, Tim Lipke, and we will say nothing else <laughs> except don't miss it. That's right. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow. Of course, it has already been taped, and... Uh, we will just tell you, do not miss it. I want to get those VCRs set for tomorrow at noon, just in case you may be out of the house for some reason. Nine box, so they increased their lead now to 14. Billy Coffold and Bob Mazur, Gary Carrington for the second frame. Gary Carrington was here on the double series in February, the last series. Paired with Rico Baldinelli, they won a match before losing in the semifinals to Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon, who wound up qualifying for the Tournament of Champions. And the eight. Well, they lose another in count. The lead is now 15. Bob Mazur for the third and fourth frames. Eight frames remain now. One of these teams moving on to championship week next week against the team of Chris Sargent and a guy named Vadne. <laughs> I think his first name is Steve. So I've heard. He's only been with us 49 times. <laughs> Spare in the third. And then two weeks from today, we begin our special four-week series, Candlepin Skins. And there's a big strike on spare, Bob Mazur. All of a sudden, there's a lot of pressure now on the team of Sargent and Carrington. Strike on spare, three marks in four boxes. Triangle in the right-hand corner, the six, nine, and 10. No. Mike thought he had it. Ten bucks. Twenty-five now is the lead, plus the strike staring them in the face in the fourth. Oh my. Not what he was looking for. Spread eagle. Well, Koffold and Mazur are going to have a, an uncharacteristically comfortable lead here with six boxes to go, but not over by any means with uh, the guys in the red jerseys here. But they are trailing right now, and they will face an increasing deficit when we come back, and Koffold and Mazur will fill that strike in the fourth. More to come on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Six boxes to go. Bill Koffold working on a strike. Well, Doug, you said there would be a double strike. Here's an opportunity. Yeah, that doesn't look like one. No. <laughs> oh, my. Now the concern is, will they be able to take advantage of the mark? Just when you think they just may put this out of reach or build up a comfortable lead, they have a lousy fill on a, on a mark. It's only 22 pins in those two frames. Still 69 after five. Still a decent half, but it could have been a lot more. 
team like Sergeant Carrington, you don't want to give any second chances. One, two, and four. Bill misses the spare chance. So an eight and a 10 and an opening for Gary Carrington as the team trails by 31. But that could disappear in a hurry with a couple of marks here. They have yet to mark in this third game. Close. Took care of the one in the back, but the seven pin didn't go. And it's still there. No. Oh. 30 pin lead, five boxes to go. 30 pin lead for Coffold and Mazer, that is, looking for their third oh. straight mark. And oh, boy. <laughs> The one, the three, and what? The eight? The yep. nine pins. The nine, right. One, three, and nine. Good, good. So Billy Koffel and Bob Mazur dodged another bullet. Left the door open for them, but they just couldn't take advantage of it. It's happened last week as well. It's just the nine, and the lead remains 31. Four frames remaining now. Last rotation, Bob Mazur to go first. Talking about the Skins game in two weeks. Again, just to briefly explain it, and we'll get into more detail, obviously, the day of the, the, day of the series begins, but there'll be four bowlers here. But instead of competing as teams, there's a spare for Bob Mazur in the seventh. Instead of competing as teams, they will compete individually. And what you will see, instead of our customary three games per show, you'll see the four bowlers roll two games in the hour. And each box will carry a cash value. If a bowler wins that box outright, they will win the money assigned to that box. If two bowlers two or more bowlers tie for the high score in a box, then the money carries over and is added to the following box and so on. So the possibilities for you know, rolling one box for two, three hundred dollars uh, exists. Of course, two spares tie. The fills mean nothing it's only for the total pinfall, but right. a strike does beat a spare. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. And of course, the two highest bowlers, the two string totals, will be allowed to come back the following week. Mike Sargent open again, and time running out for Carrington and Sargent. Lead now up to 41. Mike from Bradford, Mass. He and his wife Marianne have three children, Kimberly, Mike Jr., and Chris. And of course, you're going to see Chris next week as one half of our number one seeded team with Steve Vadney. Mike works for Ogden Martin Systems. Mike Sr., that is. Nine box, Mike Sargent is done for the day. And a chance now for Bill Koffel to close them out mathematically. He only needs uh, 19 pins to do it in the last two. Five, six, ten. No wood. Ten bucks. Well, we talked, as we often do when we begin a brand new series, about whether or not one of the teams at the bottom will be able to come all the way up and get into the championship match. And 
It appears that that is going to happen here right now, barring a miracle finish by Gary Carrington. The team of Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur have advanced. That last ball did it. It's uh, now mathematically impossible for uh, Mike and Gary to come back, but Gary will roll the final two and 392 for Coffold and Mazur. And they will get a shot at the championship next week. Well, it's tough to know sometimes how it disappears. Mike and Gary uh, put some marks together at the end of that second game. They pulled back within five. And uh, they have yet to mark in this third game. Everything seemed to be going well up to that point. Just uh, the breaks just went south on them. And a lot of leaves just like this. The two, four, and six, no wood. Almost. So we won't see father against son next week, but what we will see is Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur trying for their fourth win in a row as they make it three in a row this week over Carrington and Sargent. We'll be back to award some paychecks and talk about next week's action in a minute. All right, thanks very much. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center and uh, our semifinal doubles match is in the book, and uh, well, we talk all year long about how difficult and rare it is for a team to come all the way up from the bottom to get a shot to get into the Tournament of Champions. We have one team that's already done that this year. As we take a look once again at our Tournament of Champions ladder, these are the teams, again, that have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And right there on the top, in the top seed position right now, Ed Jerolman and Brian Fuller, and they started their series as the number four seed, had to win four matches to get there. That's correct. And they did. And they saved their best match for last, too. That's what the 430 is up there. So um, we got Bob and uh, Billy over there sitting. They were the number fifth, five seed, and they have a chance to do the same thing. All right. We'll be getting a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on. But right now, let's first present some checks. Let's call up Mike Sargent and Gary Carrington. Come on up, guys, as we have uh, third place prize money for the two of you to share, $250. I know, uh, Mike, you had to be looking forward to, to battling against your son. Gary, congratulations again for being here. Um, let's, let's talk about the, uh, the whole situation with you and Chris, first of all. I, I know you probably were looking forward to that. Uh, it's not going to happen, but you certainly must have had fun talking to him about it. Oh, yeah. He was, <laughs> I, I got on him a little bit, but it looks like he got the last laugh. <laughs> well, now you'll have to root for him, right? That's right. All right. Well, geez, you guys were, you seem to be sailing along pretty well. Tight match, five pins going into the third, and then... One of those games, nothing happens. Yeah, well, um, my ball wasn't working very good, so I was throwing a call. He was, he was doing all right. I, I had nothing to go with him, so that's, that's a story right there, I think. Well, you guys, uh, between the two of you, we were kind of wondering during the course of the show how many games you guys have thrown between you, either on television or in tournament competition over the years. Uh, probably, what, 15, 20 at least, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy. A, a lot of competition, and uh, hey, sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. Uh, you guys have had a lot of wins here as well, and uh, again, we appreciate you being here, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks very much. Thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Thank appreciate it. Congratulations, and... Uh, now let's bring up Bob Mazur and Bill Coffold once again for the third time. They know the routine by now, I guess. Congratulations, Bob, and congratulations again to you, Bill. Uh, well, now you put a score in between, put a score in between those other two. And, hey, th I guess this is uh, what you could have asked for. All you could have asked for when you start is just get a chance to get to the finals. You've got it now. Well, I think, you know, we chase a lot of Olafs, and ultimately this being the last one of the season, this is what you want to hope for, and fortunately, we're lucky enough to be in it, and hopefully we'll bowl well the next match, because that's when it really counts. Well, again, uh, you guys 
complementing each other pretty well, getting the marks, picking each other up when you need to, and, and getting the marks that you need in the third game to win. Yeah, well, we knew this last match wasn't going to be easy, and uh, it was close up until the last string, and I think the difference was we got the breaks and they didn't, unfortunately for them, fortunately for us. <laughs> so we'll take it. Well, next week, uh, for all the marbles, for that last spot in the Tournament of Champions, uh, you'll try to become the second team this year to win four matches in a row to get there. We wish you luck, and we'll see you next week. You. Congratulations again, guys. And here it is for next week. Our number one seeded team, Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney, will be here to try and challenge our number five seeds, Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur. Interesting uh, pairing, too, in Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney, uh, one of the up-and-coming young bowlers, Mike's son Chris and, uh, and Steve Vadney, of course, who will be making his 50th appearance here on the wins next week. So we got one hot team. Of course, Chris Sargent's been bowling good all year long, and everybody knows what Steve Vadney's done on the show, so it, it really is an interesting matchup for the final week. All right, don't miss it. Next weekend, of course, championship week, Saturday here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and then Sunday at at noon on Stars and Strikes. But one last reminder, do not miss tomorrow at noon the singles semifinal between Jack Quinn and Tim Lipke. The match has already been taped, of course, so uh, we're, we're paying special attention to it and reminding you to either make sure you're tuned in or set your VCR. It's, uh, it's something special, and you'll want to see that tomorrow at noon here on The Winds. So until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Till next time, thanks, everybody.